Hi there, I hope you are doing great. Today we're gonna review the most interesting high-end manual grinders on the market. Now this video is gonna be based on years of experience. I've always been very passionate about manual grinders, hand grinders in specific. In general, the idea behind a hand grinder is that the company or the manufacturer is able to focus on the quality, the alignment, the machining of the grinder as they don't have to worry about the motor, the expenses of the motor and uh, the qualification of electricity all over the world. So they have their resources invested in the grinder itself. Additionally, when it comes to hand grinders or in general, the case is that you'll be saving money. And we made two videos in lower price category hand grinders on $100 and on $250, you'll be getting better results when you compare that grinder with a higher range electrical grinder. Again, as you are there focused on the machining without worrying about the electricity part. So here today, I have very expensive hand grinders, the most interesting, expensive high end on the market, and we are reaching a level you are not worrying about the expensive. If you are planning to buy one of these grinders, in most cases, you'll be very passionate about manual grinding and you want a grinder that will last you generation, if you may. Many of them, they are built like a tank. They are portable, you can take them anywhere with you. Now, I did a lot of manual grinding and all of them, filter and espresso, and it was tiring, but uh, hopefully it will be helpful feedback for all of you. Quick note, thanks to Rountain Coffee Roasters in the UK for visiting us in this video. They are the visitor roaster in this video. They've sent us a wide range of their coffee beans, ranging from dark roast, medium roast, and light roast to test along all these hand grinders. Before I start, I just wanted to speak a brief comparison criteria. I will take price tag into consideration. And in general, in grinders, while they are all able to grind for espresso and filter coffee, they always excel in one brewing method over the other. For instance, some grinders, they will give you great results in espresso over filter. Others will be very good in filter over espresso. And some of them are versatile. So we'll mention that shortly. One Zipresso K Ultra. Now this is their top tire grinder. They have multiple options. We've already reviewed in different videos. Feel free to check those videos. However, this is the best they can offer and the most expensive one. It has many features like the foldable handle. It was improved recently by them. Uh, it is not very smooth, but uh, it's enjoyable. Like once you get used to it, you like it. But uh, it is not as smooth as I want, but I can say it's very reliable. It will never fold with you while grinding. It is very stiff and the knob is very smooth and ergonomically pleasing to grip. This grinder using bird geometry that is focused for filter coffee. So it will give you delicious filter coffee. At the same time, it has micro clicks. It has click system. You can hear here. And uh, they went finer click system rather than grinders like one, one Zipresso K Plus, which was in the past that we've already reviewed. And they are enough to dial in your perfectly timed espresso shot. I would say in general, I got a difference in extraction time between four, four seconds maybe to seven seconds. It will taste wonderful on both filter and espresso and it is really fast to grind with. For filter coffee, it takes almost 25 seconds to 30 seconds to grind 15 gram, which is really fast. So basically if you are brewing for one person, 25 seconds of hand grinder, that's it, you are done. If you are brewing for two people, 30 gram filter coffee, it will be under one minute. And that's an amazing feature in this grinder. But when it comes to espresso, with this bird geometry, it will require more force to grind with. For a reference, I will set it on espresso and show you how it feels while grinding light roast coffee beans. I'm gonna use Ethiopian coffee, relatively light. This is how it feels grinding for espresso. It's easy to grip. I like the fact of the shape that your hand will not be touching the dosing cup, which is by the way magnetic. So in different model, the one Zipresso J Max, that one it's all flat design and many times the lower part of my hand used to hit the dosing cup and used to fill off. Whereas in this grinder, there's no issue with it. It is not very difficult, but while grinding, sometimes you feel occasional bumps. Yeah, but it is, it is achievable. I wouldn't mind living with it and grinding for espresso. All in all, I really love this grinder. It is very versatile and uh, I like the clicks. 
I like the handle. It comes with accessory. The cleaning brush is really nice. The magnetic dosing cup, it has silicone at the bottom. For instance, not scratch the table or... Yeah, that is really nice grinder. The Comandante C40 MK4. Always love doing this with Comandantes. Now, Comandante was one of the very first high-end grinders on the market. They've been there for quite a while. They are all made in Germany and in general they are slightly more expensive due to the machining cost and labor costs. They offer a lot of wooden options. I like the wooden options. This one is metal. Also the metal they have so many different colors. They've recently upgraded the dosing cup to plastic one. It used to be glass one in the MK3 and people were always complaining of having the glass catcher cup breaking. It, uh... It has relatively old grind adjustment mechanism from the bottom and my main issue with it is with it, when it comes to espresso it's not sufficient enough to dial your espresso shot. For instance you get difference in extraction time between 15 seconds or 10 seconds sometimes 7 seconds but in most cases it's not enough to dial for your espresso you have to adjust your dose. If it's too fine instead of going one click coarser you have to dose half gram less have faster extraction time. Uh, it makes delicious filter coffee again and people love it and filter coffee because it's very reliable and the burrs that it's using they are very sharp and they are famous for its consistency. I like filter coffee from this and uh, but overall it is really expensive and I feel the grind adjustment mechanism is slightly outdated nowadays and uh, it takes a lot of time for, to grind for a minute and a half for espresso and even in 15 gram filter coffee it's always the same within a minute and 10 seconds minute 40 seconds sometime and if you decide to go double dose for two people that's past two minutes of manual grinding it is very slow now the commandante is slightly wider to grip so if you have small hands you might find difficulty in gripping it they do offer rubber bands as it has very sharp burrs. While grinding it is not difficult. However, you get accidental bumps and it is really noticeable in the Commandante. But once you get the rhythm, it's achievable. Made by Nock Felt 47. I'm a huge fan of this grinder. It is made in the UK and this is the recent upgrade. It has a magnetic piece here to attach the handle on it. It has upper grind adjustment mechanism. Once you put the grinding handle on the top, you put it on place and you just adjust from here. That's the grind adjustment mechanism. It's really enjoyable. I love having the grind adjustment outside when compared to something like the Commandante hidden in the bottom. I rarely notice the grind adjustment shifting. I know some people might be worrying about that, but it's not an issue. It rarely moves. It is very easy to grip. It's using titanium coated burrs by Etal Mill. I like the wooden handle knob. It's also magnetic. It takes around like a minute and uh, 20 seconds to grind for espresso. However, the grinding experience is enjoyable. Let me show you. In filter coffee, it takes around 55 seconds to grind. Longer than the one espresso K Ultra, but uh, yeah. It's still good. It will give you good filter coffee, high sweetness in filter coffee, but there's not a lot of clarity as something like the Commandante or One's Presso K Ultra. But I know many people, they want, that, they want that extra sweetness instead of the extra clarity or crispness. So this is how it feels in grinding for espresso. It is really achievable. I've always enjoyed grinding for espresso using it. And it's easy to grip with the handle holder even you can rest your fingertips on it and it will give you the extra grip the apollo grinder this grinder is made by a company called la pavoni i would say they designed it in mind for dark roast the reason why i say that because this is one of the fastest hand grinders between everything here especially in espresso it grinds 18 gram for espresso within 35 seconds, which is really fast. But with that speed, it is very tough to grind for espresso and very difficult to grip. They do offer you three elastic bands 
which is more than enough in assisting the grip, but is still very difficult to grip. It has upper grind adjustment mechanism, again from the top, and it's click clickable. They will give you a difference in extraction time almost one second, more than you need for espresso. If you leave the top open, you will have popcorn and coffee beans will be flying everywhere. And it comes with this silicone rubber cover. It is good, but sometimes it flips off while grinding. I don't know if it's me, but uh, I've noticed while grinding sometimes it flies away. And uh, yeah, it is very well machined. It feels heavy. It comes with a travel bag. The only issue with it is the shipping fee. It is slightly expensive and they don't have the alternatives. It's very smooth and the tolerance is very nice. Light roast. It is really fast and uh, I would say the main advantage of this grinder and when I said they designed for espresso rows. So basically with lever machines you do need to grind finer because there is pre-infusion time and with pre-infusion water will flow faster if the coffee puck is wet. Accordingly you do need to grind much finer than usual. And if you are using dark roast you still be ending up with a reasonable grinding time like 50 seconds. Whereas with different grinders, it will jump additional half minute extra time or one minute. So this grinder will make perfect option for their approach with lever machines, kind of well-developed roasting profile. It makes decent filter coffee, but it excels in espresso. Apollo grinder. Orphan Espresso Lido OG. Again, with Orphan Espresso, they've been there maybe for 10 years in hand grinders. They are based in the US. And with the Lido OG, it has a very interesting design. It is strange, I will be honest, but it is interesting like no other. It has a very large catcher cup. And I think it's able to fit around like 50 or 60 grams of coffee beans in both the grinding chamber and the dosing cup. Fill the beans from the side. You have a window here, so you fill the beans. And the grind adjustment, it has two, two kinds of grind adjustments from the top. The first one is clickable. It will give you a very wide range of adjustments in order to move between filter and espresso. It is probably the fastest one to move between filter and espresso. Like right now we are on espresso, filter, espresso, filter. However, with the main grind adjustment, it's not enough for espresso. They are very wide. So they've added micro adjustments on the top you untighten the screw and you slightly rotate it. It has many issues. With this micro grind adjustment mechanism, you don't know where you are. You have to memorize. For instance, you went like two clicks on the micro adjustments. You should know and memorize that you want two clicks finer. Also, when it comes to espresso, with medium roast, when you have to go really fine, sometimes you reach the point that the burrs are touching until you get a decent espresso extraction. So I would say the burrs, they are not sufficient for very light roast. Or at least you'll be touching the burrs. And I don't like to grind when the burrs are touching. It is a versatile grinder. If you're using medium roast, it's an interesting. I like the design. We've customized the handle knob to wooden one because it used to be very small. And uh, yeah, overall, it's an interesting grinder. I know many people love the philosophy behind Orphan Espresso. But I do think they need to work on the grind adjustment mechanism. Moving on to the Kino M47 Classic. Again with the Kino, it's been there for a long time. They build very nice grinders. It is very well machined and their alignment is almost like no other. They are perfectly aligned perfectly machined. With this version, the M47 Classic, it's full stainless steel body, whereas many other grinders they're using aluminum and this one it's fully stainless steel. Accordingly, it's really heavy. Honestly, in reality, once you hold a Kino, you'll know why it is expensive. It is really well built. I remember when I was buying it, I was not very optimistic on the quality and I thought to myself that it's really expensive. However, after I got a hold of it, I realized the manufacturing that goes behind it. It has an upper grind adjustment mechanism. Basically, you loosen the upper nut and uh, you go finer or coarser. It's stepless. You don't have clicks. And it's very accurate. It gives you control over the extraction time. Again, within two seconds of difference while you are moving the grind adjustments. 
I love the magnetic grind catcher cup. It's magnet. The handle is really nice and it has micro clicks in it that are very satisfying to hear. I don't know if you can hear them. You can hear many people saying it's built like a tank because it is like that. I remember I had it on my setup right in front of the window and one time it fell down and hit a marble piece. And the funny thing that nothing bad happened to the grinder apart from the marble. It literally scratched the marble and nothing happened to the grinder. Zero bends. The only thing that happened to it is the handle. The knob was broken because it's plastic. However, I got touch with Kino and they've instantly sent me a new handle. The advantages of the Kino is that it grinds fast. For filter coffee, it takes around 28, 30 seconds to grind 15 gram. Again, this is very welcomed and I love that fact. In espresso, it takes around a minute and 20 seconds to grind 18 gram for espresso. It is a reasonable time and considered on the fast side. One of the issues with the Kino is that the open top. You do get occasional popcorns and I think they are able to offer a covering magnetic shape. That will be a very interesting upgrade. It has a nice thumb stopper to assist you on the grip, but I usually grip hand grinders with my right hand. So it's stopping not my thumb, it's stopping my index finger. Um, I found sometimes I'm liking to put the thumb stopper inside my hand or some way between my fingers, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's nice for your grinding with your left hand, it will be more effective. Yeah, we, we got occasional popcorning, ground coffee. It is consistent in the grind feedback, but uh, I remember it is slightly slippery, and I would love for them to include the elastic rubber bands as a stock in the, in the travel bag. It comes with a travel bag, but you do have to pay extra for the elastic bands to prevent, to improve the grip, and they should include it by stock. Moving on to the Mazer Omega X. Now this grinder has been released recently. It's an upgraded version over the normal Mazer, which I have here. And the grinder comes with two versions of different burrs, soft or fast. I would say skip on the fast because it's a slightly faster. It is much more difficult to grind with. This is the fast version and go with the X. With the X they added extra clicks, finer clicks. With the normal version you use to get extraction difference around like 10 seconds of extraction difference with each click. Whereas with the X it is very effective. It gives you almost like three seconds of extraction difference with each click, sometimes two seconds. And uh, with the soft burr, it is really easy to grind. It's probably one of the easiest grinders out here. However, it does take longer time. Again, it's a relationship between how easy it is to grind, how long it takes to grind for. They've also started including this cover lid. It has a very nice shape. Everything sticks together, sits on the table. Magnetic handle, magnetic handle knob, and the magnetic cover. The clicks are from the top. They are very accurate and satisfying to use. That's the magnetic cover. And you put the handle, and by the way, this is the only grinder with the carbon fiber. The handle is made out of carbon fiber. Really luxurious. It has a threaded catcher cup, but it's a thick thread. And with only one twist, it's closed, it opens. It has a silicone group gasket. So when you close the catcher cup, it sits in place perfectly. Rubber at the bottom. To prevent hitting the table. Now the thing is with Mazer. Mazer is a very old Italian company manufacturer. They are very famous. They've been famous for so many years. They produce commercial grinders. Almost in any coffee shop you enter, you'll find Mazer grinders. And they were trying to move their philosophy to this grinder, the Omega. By philosophy, I mean their burst geometry. Back in the days, people used to prefer dark roast and well-developed roasting coffee well-developed roasted coffee beans. And Mazer, they were very famous in doing very well with those roasting profiles. Accordingly, if you're using dark roast, you'll get very delicious espresso. It will be creamy because in dark roast, you don't want clarity. Otherwise, you'll feel only bitterness. With dark roast, you want that creamy texture, the strong body, and that goes perfect in milky drinks, in Americanos, even as an espresso as is. If you go with something like, let's say, the 
once you press to or the commandante with dark roast you'll get bitterness harsh bitterness because it's clear the body is low however if you decide to go medium roast or light roast it's still enjoyable but uh, i would like to see different bird geometry by them and in filter coffee again it's a decent filter coffee I would say it's designed for dark roast coffee however i'm very optimistic to see what they are planning to come in the future with different birds geometry and i've heard they are considering that i'm not sure so let me show you how easy it is to grind for espresso it takes around two minutes and a half to grind for espresso which is really long however it's the easiest grinder you put the cover i really love that cover they recently came with it they started including it in the package yeah like it comes all in together it comes with the rubber bands as stock in the package and they provide you with two now just to illustrate how easy it is you can grip with three fingers the knot yeah the mother omega x the bravito grinder by brava now this grinder is made in very low quantities in brazil I got in touch on the founder of the company and he said like he was always passionate about grinders, hand grinders specifically, and he wanted to create a grinder to satisfy his needs. Like he wanted to be to create something that he's proud of. And I would say it's really interesting. It comes with this base and that it's basically assists you as a base for the grinder. It's a very nice idea. And it's magnetic. If you hit the grinder, it won't fall off. But if you want to take it off, just give it a slight flip and it will go out, come up. It is very easy to grip. It has stepless grind adjustment mechanism here from the top. It is very smooth. It reminds me of the Niche Zero grinder as smooth grind adjustment mechanism. It's almost as an electric grinder here from the top and it does not move. It is very stiff and it's very simple like to go between filter and espresso. It has a cover from the top, similar open top to the Kino, but uh, it comes with the cover. The handle is lengthy enough to offer you good grinding feedback. It uses the same burrs that are used in the Kino and the B Plus and the Made by Knock. So you can expect similar results in regard to espresso and filter as it is very well aligned. We have to touch on alignment like many grinders. Almost all of them, they have very nice alignment, but the alignment in it is really reliable. It has a threaded catcher cup again with the gasket from the bottom with a gasket from the inside so when you close it it's secured in place i love this grinder for espresso because it is easy to grip and it is fast it takes around like a minute and 20 seconds and the feedback is also very nice i only have one issue the cover the lid cover sometimes i do get some occasional ground coffee from the top so it can be designed in a better way however they are not mass production uh, maybe each year like a hundred grinder comes out so it's easy fix um, let's see again it is very enjoyable to use that's it the bravito grinder the pietro grinder by fiorenzato Now this is the only grinder between those grinders that is using flat burrs. In general, it has always been difficult to use flat burrs and hand grinders because it will take more grinding efforts and more time to grind, especially for espresso. However, with this grinder, they add a lot of roller bearings and they've made the handle short so it will be more effective, giving you more rotations. In general, when it comes to hand grinders, there's a difference between a manual grinder and a hand grinder. For instance, we've tested in the past very expensive hand grinder the hg1 prime the right grinder is a thousand dollar and i discovered an issue with it which is that many people they love hand grinders due to its portability and the fact it's silence hand grinder you can just grip it in your hand to grind with it the only noise you are getting is from the grinding mechanism itself you're not getting it from standing on it being it sitting on the table moving the vibrations and you can use your both hands walk while grinding do anything you want however with the pietro grinder similar to the hg1 prime grinder you have to have it sitting on a table 
my main issue with that with it is that you have to hold it on a table and grind with it and it is noisy because you are resting it on a table you're getting all the vibrations even if you are resting it on a marble plate in your kitchen it's still making a lot of noise a lot of vibrations usually flat burrs gives better results than conical burrs and filtered co coffee that's a general idea sometimes it's wrong but in most cases it's correct with those birds they are make very delicious filter coffee i really enjoy the filter coffee from it for instance if i'm having an expensive coffee beans i will definitely grind them with this because i'll be rest assured that i'm getting the optimum results out of it i would say the difference is not mind-blowing compared to something like the one espresso k ultra but it is there you feel like the margin of having bad coffee is low like uh, no matter what is your range slightly coarser slightly finer you're still getting very delicious filter coffee it takes around a minute and a half to grind for espresso or filter coffee around that range and it requires some reasonable force especially like if you are grinding with light roasted coffee beans also it has magnetic catcher cup by the way it is very practical to use but the top it has a gasket i know they said they don't want magnet to prevent occasional fallout but i think they could have designed it as magnet in some way it is not as smooth as i wished it to be the handle is very nice and it is easy to open like just you push the button here you twist it and you're reaching the burrs it is very simple and very fast right now it's back uh yeah i like the look of it they offer different colors it is heavy the grind adjustment is from the front also it's very reliable like let's say right now espresso filter espresso filter it comes with a click system but if you remove this you'll get a small piece that's causing the clicks and you can remove it it is an easy procedure just to be to make it as stepless grind adjustments on espresso it will give you an extraction difference of three seconds to two seconds again it can be used in espresso it's very reliable so let me show you how it feels to grind for espresso so right now it's on the table and you have to put your hand on it they are planning to offer a base to put the grinder on which is supposed to improve the stability of it you can see it's very noisy it is not very difficult you do get again some occasional bumps while grinding but it is achievable however during grinding i always keep noticing that i just wish to hold it in my hand and grind with it it's not designed to be held that way and as you will be touching the grind adjustment and there is no easy way of holding it i would say if fiorenzato is considering and offering different design that one will be extremely interesting i mean they could have went with something like the typical design i don't know you see that occasional bumps yeah that's it. the pietro grinder definitely an interesting one moving on to the commandante c60 barracuda now this grinder is still not being sold it is maybe like 40 units been sold around the world and i was very lucky to have a dear friend send this over for us for uh, just for the sake of the review we did try very hard to get our hands on one and finally we were able to do that because we wanted to include it in the review so commandante basically with this grinder they went with full stainless steel design they used to have the central stability area and their c40 grinder made out of plastic you can see here however with this one it's just one chunk of stainless steel it is very heavy they went with larger burrs they are even larger than the one that are being used in one espresso k ultra slightly larger they are supposed to give you faster grinding time however surprisingly it takes around like a minute and uh, 20 seconds to grind for espresso so i wouldn't say it's very fast considering that in one espresso it takes around like 55 seconds here it's a minute and 20 seconds so i'm not sure why the reason maybe it's the way that's feeding the beans to the burrs in filter coffee again it takes around like a minute 
to grind 15 grams so it's not a huge improvement in speed also it has lower grind adjustment mechanism i don't know why they wanted to go with this design honestly at this price tag i just can't accept their lower grind adjustment mechanism i'm not a fan of it additionally there is a very serious issue with the grind adjustment and the c40 it used to be lower burr and the clicks it has triangle shape so basically your finger sits inside the triangle and you rarely touch the burr the outside of the burr so i've never had an issue of any accidents with the c60 i saw many people many friends cutting their fingers because the lower side of the comb burr it's really it's really sharp and i said to myself there's no way i will cut my fingers with it and the first time I use it, innocently three cuts I got on my index and my middle finger. It's just very annoying. And as the clicks, they are much stiffer than the normal ones. They are much stiffer. You are really risking cutting your fingers. I don't know why they decided to go with this design. I hope they improve it. But it is really serious issue. Because in the end, you are grind, you are adjusting the grind mechanism from the lower. And the chances of the cutting your fingers are really high. Regarding taste wise, I did notice in filter coffee it gave better results than the C40. Like the astringency was less when you go really fine, when you push the grind setting finer, you are still getting clarity, crispness. But uh, is it worth the much higher price tag? I'm not sure. It is very nice, it feels very luxurious. I love the look of it, I love those cuttings and the design. It is not very easy to grip, but it comes with an elastic band and does require a lot of force to grind for espresso. Really a lot of force. Even the handle is lengthier and the knob is much larger. In general, an espresso, depending on the roast, sometimes it took one minute and sometimes took a minute and 20 seconds. So it is faster than the C40. But I wouldn't say it's mind-blowing faster. Uh, yeah, the Commandante C60. Last but not least, the Heater 106. Now this is a very interesting grinder. Right now I would say it is very old one and it requires much newer versions and many new upgrades. But the reason why it's interesting because it is like no other. It is using the largest burrs out of these. They are Mazer 71 millimeter burrs. They are really large burrs. Just the fact that you are able to implement 71 millimeter burr that have been used in a huge commercial coffee grinder within a hand grinder and able to grind for it, that fact made this grinder very interesting. However, with newer burrs geometries and newer upgrades, I cannot see the reason why I'm using this burr in a hand grinder. It just like that does not make that much of a sense because there are many more interesting burr geometry than this that will give you really nice results and some many times better than the results out of this burr. As this is very large burr, in order for you to achieve a grinding possibility, they've implemented gears and within the handle knob. This handle knob by itself is around 500 gram in weight, which is really funny. And you can see here the tolerance right now it's rotating because it has all almost maybe 12 rural bearings. We did made a make a video about it where we took everything apart. And those roller bearings will act as a step down gear. Basically, each one and a half rotation will give you one rotation in the grinder. These steps will ensure that you are offering less grinding force. It is easy to grip due to the thin body and I love the dosing cup. It has so many magnets and it's very stiff. The grind adjustment mechanism is from the bottom. One the main disadvantage of the grind adjustment mechanism is that it does not have numbers. So it's very tough to know where you are. For instance, in Comandante you count the clicks. Like you remember I'm at click number seven, click number eight. Whenever you forget, you know that you've been at click number 20 you go to zero then count backwards whereas here there are no clicks just stepless it is enough to achieve very nice espresso extraction time it weighs two kilograms 
but uh, some people for people who are really interested into 71 millimeter mother burrs this is the only grinder that is able to do that and it is portable you can take it anywhere with you with medium to medium dark roast it will taste wonderful it will give you a very thick body at the same time reasonable clarity my main issue with grinding with it as it is a step down grinder you will have consistent force consistent feedback for instance in normal grinders when you have when you when you go to the rhythm of grinding you just it's smooth you get some accidental bumps but it's smooth whereas with this one as it's stepped down the feedback and the torque is consistent and you cannot go very fast it is really quiet grinder by the way and the fact that you are holding two kilograms in the air while grinding it is tough it comes with a very cheap knob i customized this one uh yeah the Halo 106 so to summarize everything if your main aim is filter coffee that's your main aim you just want very high-end machine grinder for filter coffee that will give you delicious filter coffee personally i would pick the ones chris okay ultra i just love it the price tag the portability the features the advantage the speed the grinding speed within 25 seconds 15 gram coffee that's just a huge advantage the pietro grinder will give you the best clarity most probably it's flat bird brine birds by the way they don't have screws to hold in place it will give you very delicious filter coffee and again you have the commandante i'm not a huge fan of the grind adjustment of the commandante and their pricing i understand why they are expensive i do understand that the machining the place where they are manufactured but uh, yeah just if you are speaking everything here my favorites are the k ultra and the pietro pietro just the fact that it will give you that tasting profile uh, it's not as portable as the k ultra but it's a wonderful consideration and wonderful option if you want a grinder that will give you sweet filter coffee with good body clarity is not your priority and at the same time you really like to grind for espresso you have those options the bravito the kino the apollo grinder the made by knock felt 47. all of these grinders the four of them they use the same burr the main issue with this burr if you have a slight misalignment you won't get delicious filter coffee the alignment needs to be perfect in order to get very delicious filter coffee and that's the case in the kino filter coffee barista competition where the winner used kino grinder just to prove how much it is well aligned and the sweetness was higher using it in filter coffee the made by knock felt and the bravito they are very well machined and they are able to reach the alignment of the kino so it's based on your price tag on the features on the design the look and also the access of it because some grinders they are in different countries they have different shipping fees different criteria if you really want something very fast and you prefer well-developed roasting profile as we spoke like something like Pavoni the one plus is the fastest 35 seconds grind for espresso it is really fast it is the fastest one the Mazer is very easy to grind with but uh, takes a lot of time that was just my humble opinion i hope you have enjoyed it if you have any of these hand grinders let me know your thoughts in the comment i would love to hear your feedback we have discount codes in the description make sure to check the discount codes and benefit from them thanks to the visitor roaster Rontin coffee for joining us here and uh, that's it take care and i'll see you very soon in the next video bye it is really reliable it is really reliable and